Hey everybody, this is Cisco Geek from the Voxel Bucks, uh, and today I'm here with one of the Voxel Sniper devs, Guiltwist, who is going to show us some of the new features and highlights of Voxel Sniper 5. Hello snipers, I'm Guiltwist, I'm one of the devs, and first of all, I just want to talk to you a little bit about why we released Voxel Sniper 5. Uh, for those of you who have used our earlier versions, you might remember that you had to deal with the ball brush, the ink ball brush, the ink ball replace brush, the ink ball xylophone brush. No, I, I kid, but it, w it got to be kind of complicated. And so our head coder, Preserwap, uh, realized that, hey, I can make this a whole lot simpler. And he decided to separate it all out so there's just one ball brush. And then there's this other new thing he invented called the performers, which do all the hard work. So the brushes have been significantly reduced in number, but thanks to these new things called performers, which I'll explain in a minute, there's a whole lot more options in terms of flexibility and versatility, and you're really going to love it. And you've got to thank Peter for coming up with all the, the, um, the basic idea that's so good. Um, you may have had access to our uh, .006 version, which we released to the forum. Uh, from point zero zero nine and on, the names of the performers have changed slightly to be a little bit more consistent and uh, versatile. Um, so, the first thing I want to do ex is explain to you a little bit more about these. So, so the the brushes they do shape. So you have the ball, the voxel, the splatter ball. That those are all shapes. The performers do the the placement of the blocks. So you can place a material, you can place an ink, you can replace a material. All of those things that chain, required changing the name of the brush, none of that anymore. So, and we've simplified the naming scheme, so really you only need to remember three letters. M for material, I for ink, and C for a combination of both. We thought about using the letter B for both, but then you would have ended up with really strange things like slash B, space B, space B, and that would have been ridiculous. Uh, so, the basic idea is, if I wanted to slap down, say, a disk of log, I could do that. And what I would do is I'd pull out my trusty sniper arrow, and type slash B, space D, as in disk, space M, M for material. Bam! A disk of log. In fact, let me bring that up a level, so you can actually see that it is log. The other thing that you might want to do with, if you had yourself a disk of log laying around, you might say to yourself, I don't want just any old log, I want redwood log. And so, you're going to use the same disk brush, no ink disk, just disk, but we're going to use the ink performer, and you'd select this by typing slash B, space D, space I. And just like before, you set your ink with slash VI. And one quick, one click later, the whole thing has been turned to Redwood Log. But, you know, hey, two clicks, that's way too much work. I like it nice and easy. I want to be able to slap down the log and turn it into Redwood in one go. And for that, I'll use the combination C performer. So I'm going to type slash B, space D, space C. There you go, in one click, Redwood Log. Uh, that's really the basics of the system. Remember, M for material, I for ink, C for combination. But Gilwist, you say, I want to replace stuff. I don't just want to set it down. Well, that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to come over here to this ball of stone. And just like before, all you need to remember are letters M, I and C. And all we're going to do is add one extra letter onto the end. So I want to turn this stone, which is a material, into, I don't know, let's say dirt, which is also a material. So I'm going to go from a material to a material. That's all you have to ask yourself. What am I replacing? In this case, a material. And what am I placing? In this case, a material. So just like before, since I was wanting to place a material, the first letter of the performer would be M. Since I'm also replacing a material, the second letter is also M. So I'm going to type slash B, and I'm going to use a ball brush this time, so slash B, space B, space M, M. 
And I'm going to set my voxel replace material to stone. And I'm going to set my voxel material to dirt. Bam, there's a ball replace stone oh, to dirt. A little bit. Oh, well, yeah, I hit... I didn't make it very big. But the basic idea is still there. But we can go f further. I'm going to go ahead and undo this. I don't want to just turn it t from stone into any old material. I want it to be colored cloth. So I'm not going to... I'm still going to replace a material, but I'm going to place a combination of ink and material. So for this, I'm going to use the slash B, space B, space C, M. C, remember, the first one is what you're placing, and I'm placing a combination, and the second letter is what you're replacing, which is a material in this case. So slash B, space B, space C. Uh, my replaced material will still be stone, but now my voxel material is going to be cloth, which is 35, and I'm going to use, oh, I don't know, ink 4. Bada bing, bada boom, inked cloth right there, ready to go. Uh, and that's basically how the system works. It's all about a matter of M, I, and C. Do you got that, Cisco? Yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh... All right, let's test your knowledge. Come on over here. I've I've set a little demo course, and if you can solve these three little things, I think you can take care of all your sniping needs for yourself. So I've got them labeled from easiest to hardest. I want you to go ahead and do number one there. And remember, ask yourself, what am I placing, and what am I replacing? All right, since it's only one layer, I'll probably use a disk for this, so BD. And since I'm going to be replacing a material, I'm going to need my source and destination, so double M. Uh, convert stone to dirt, but not plank. So my replace material will be one stone. And my material is going to be five for plank. And we're going to brush size the four just so we cover it all. Click. Cool. Okay. okay, for this next one, you need to change the color of this uh, fancy patterned cloth, but don't mess with this gray cloth that's next to it. Seems fairly straightforward, just inking it. Okay. Well, you're not just inking it, because if you just slap down a disc of ink, you change all the cloth. Hmm. Uh, it's similar to ink snipe. That's kind of what I was uh, saying. Oh, you could certainly just snipe it. Go for it. Uh, but if you wanted to do it with a disc brush, oh, you could also do it with a replace. Got to do it the hard way. For the folks at home. So a voxel ink replace is going to be the data value. Yeah, data variable of the carpet here. Uh, I'm gonna grab that. Can't grab it in front, the sign gets in the way. And we will change the ink to this. And click. Okay, last challenge, and if you can do this, you can do anything. I want you to turn these two redstone, pardon me, red wood logs into glowstone. But keep in mind, right next to them, is some other log, and right behind it is some cloth that happens to have the same data value. And ask yourself, so what am I placing? Specifying... And well, because I'm changing both ink and material, I probably want to use a uh, double combo. No. Well, glowstone doesn't need any data. You could certainly do it with double C, but it would be probably ah, the, so the yeah, most efficient way would be to material. do. That's right, but remember, what you're placing always comes first, so M-C. You're placing a material, glowstone, and you're replacing, as you said, a combination. Ah, okay. So, B, D, M, and C. That is correct.
Then you'll set your voxel material to glowstone, your voxel replace to log, and your voxel ink replace to 1, because redwood is 1. Ta-da! Although it's quite the design faux pas. Oh, no doubt. But what's really great about these performers is you can do things like you could never do with earlier versions of Voxel Sniper. Like, hey, that wall has some orange cloth that I want to turn to blue cloth, but I don't want to damage the gray cloth that is also in the wall. It's really just that much precision and control. Uh, one last thing I want to mention in this video is that you can use no physics performers also. You just slap a P on the end. Uh, I'm going to make a voxel disc of stationary water float in the air. In earlier versions of Voxel Sniper, you could only no physics snipe one block at a time. Not the case anymore. While balls and voxels and the other 3D brushes still don't work very well with no physics, discs work great. So I'm going to do slash B space D space MP. And I'm going to set my vox... Physics, right? physics, yes, correct. And the P always goes last. And I'm going to use the voxel material 9, which is stationary. Goodbye, sign. Floating water! A whole disk of it. And the, the opportunities will continue to expand. We're experimenting with options that will help you overcome some of Minecraft's uh, visual glitches. Uh, we've got ideas about how to exclude materials. That's something we've gotten often requested. And who knows what could come in the future. And performers are going to give you just so many more options. And I, we really hope you enjoy them. And don't forget to check voxelwiki.com for all the latest updates and releases on new performers.